Hello and welcome to our first live edition of Spitty Pit. We are cutting through the political noise and coming to you live from the Independent Electoral Commission's headquarters uh, here in Pretoria. This is where all of the, count, uh, the counting of the results is collated and we can see it right there behind me on the leaderboard. We are already at over 5 million votes passed and of course as we're hearing screams possibly behind me there, some parties celebrating. Uh, the numbers. But before we actually get into the numbers, there's a big issue here that is actually brewing and that is around the voter fraud allegation. And to discuss this, I've got Nkuleleko from the IFP. Thank you very much it's for joining us. And also Sam Kukeli, our resident analyst. And Nkuleleko, I understand you guys started with a very heated uh, uh, meeting with the commission. All of the po political parties were there. What exactly was the resolution at this meeting? <coughs> well, let me show if I can take it a step back because we as the AFP um, lodged a complaint even on the 7th. Um, of May, Prince Boutelizzi wrote to the chairman, Mr. Glenn Mashinini, um, with a number of issues um, which have given rise now to the current and prevailing situation. <clears throat> and on the 7th, that's way on, before the Yes, election. the day before, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and then um, yesterday, some of your colleagues in the media as well were raising the same issues, you remember, even at the press briefings that um, the IEC holds um, down um, there in the gallery. Um, and the issue had been prevailing because on the ground it was coming through that the ink one was removable, so it was not, in, it was not indelible ink. Um, two, you've got the VC4 forms which allow people to vote in their non-normal um, voting districts and those were pretty much um, not in, in existence in the voting stations. <clears throat> Thirdly, the zip zip machine is not live. Yes. So it's, it's, not, not, connected it's not connected to, to anything. Central yeah. And the other predicament is that it's only functional for green ID books, not with the smart cards. Really? Um, I mean, there's, there's a particular issue with that as okay. well, there as well. So all these things combined have now given rise to um, people um, double dipping, if I may say, voting twice. Um, we already have in, in, in Pendle, for example, in Peter Maritzburg, um, this allegation has been there, we've presented it. And as we speak now, our PLC member is receiving um, constant reports. Just to explain to our <coughs> listeners before we go into how many uh, um, you know, formal complaints there are. So basically what we're saying is that with the current system, you yeah. could not prevent people from actually voting twice. People could actually go and vote at one uh, voting station and then go to another one and still yeah. be given the ballot and actually vote. Yeah, that, that is precisely what could have happened. And, and the issue is that this is not a new reality. Mm. And that has been presented before and the ISC seemed um, not to respond to it well for reasons that only they can explain. But fundamentally is that the zip zip machine which scans your ID all it does is just confirm that Tim Kulego is a vo is a registered voter and votes in this in, in this particular voting district. So even if I'm not in my own particular voting district, I go to another one. The zip zip will give out the same information as it would in another VD. That doesn't get processed anyway. It doesn't say I've voted, right? And I proceed to get myself inked. If I can remove the ink um, and get scratched on the voters' roll and vote, I can go and repeat the same process get zip zipped, get Fill inked, and, 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 and of course there were no forms available in some voting districts as yes, well. Yeah. So I can skip that and vote and therefore there is no record really as to whether I vote in that VD or not. And so those are, and of course this affects reconciliation. That's why you even now in some voting districts they are unable to reconcile a number of ballots issued because they do not have a paper trail or an evidence trail of where people um, actually voted. So what, what happens now? I mean, we've got all of these allegations. What did you guys decide as uh, the political parties with the commission? What is happening? Well, last night we raised the issue with the IEC and this morning we presented a formal um, a, a complaint and grievance and the IEC has said they're going to now sample, so they're going to investigate um, whether this was prevalent or it was isolated. Bottom line is They've got no technical capability or capable know-how as to whether um, this happened or not. And that is why the system fundamentally is so suspect. So we have said, go and do an investigation, come back to us, and we will then interrogate um, the report. So there's very little comfort or confidence really as to what will come out. But I mean, the issue could be that... Um you know, to affect a ballot or to affect an election. I mean, to get a seat, you need about 40,000 seats. You would probably have to show that more than 40,000 uh, 
double voting yeah. actually happened that could have an impact on the outcome of those votes? But with the PR system, every vote has an impact. Particularly for those who will be at the bottom end of the scale where the every percentage counts. 0 0.011 makes all the difference. So this has got a material effect. You know, so it, then it becomes a, a domino effect. Um, so that's why it's important to, to, to invest it. If we are dealing with you know, small scale, then yeah, but the issue is every vote counts. So what do we do? I mean, uh, yes, there's a sample, then we discover that there could have been some irregularities, hopefully enough to say that we can't affect the impact of the vote. Do we accept the vote and then look for new measures to protect the voting system in the next election? Well, let's cross that person to get to it yeah. in terms of what the, the, the audit will come out with. Because one of the things we are saying is that we have got tangible cases to say person X voted twice, right? So that person doesn't need to be sampled. You need to investigate that person because they're an evidence trail in terms of whether they were receiving instruction on this matter. Whether So once you let's quarantine now people. Let's isolate people to say, right, person X, you voted twice. And take us through how that happened because also it will take us to VDs and we'll then be able to investigate a VD whether this was the case. So, so we can't expect the results on Saturday if this process that you're explaining <laughs> actually unfolds. Th that is precisely um, the potential reality before us now. Mm. Um, that we're not in a position to say with certainty now that results will, be, will come out on Saturday. And by the way, this is an IEC fault. Let's we don't, don't shy away from that. The IEC must take full responsibility um, and for they this. Told us yesterday we've got measures and measures. No, and there's measures no measures to secure. They, the that's why they were in sixes and nines yesterday. And and if I may just give a personal anecdote, in 2017 you'll remember the go to by elections yes. where there was a disestablishment of that. Right, I was a party agent. Me, Kule Waslem. I was a party agent. And our voting districts, I remember very well, we were the last ones to. Um, submit results because my gripe with the PO was that she was unable to explain the zip zip. She was unable to reconcile the issues and I said and, and we presented this issue to the IEC. I mean this is a recent case of 2017 but there's cases prior and the IEC time and time again say, doesn't listen. And you know what? People are advocating for a so-called electronic vote. That's not even the issue. We're not even going there. All we are saying is build in the technical support to be able to have an evidence trail, a paper trail to say, I can tell you that Mkulego arrived at VDX, was scanned at 20 past 3, and give the ev turnaround time he voted at 22 at what? Now, and if he arrives at somewhere else, else it will tell you that he arrived. Yes. You know, but you've already voted yes. at that particular Because, place. I mean, if, if, the, if, if, if my, my ID number should be my track, I mean, we were now just dealing yes. with the app now. Yeah. I had to punch in my ID number and it immediately by doing that, it profiled my whole activity on the IEC app. Why can't we track voters in that way? We're speaking about the fourth industrial revolution. For goodness sake, let us at the very least build in for IR like kind of technical capabilities into the system. We're not talking about a total overhaul. I mean, we understand the financial implications this would have on the fiscal and so on and so forth. The issue is fundamentally the IEC has not covered itself in any glory about. Um, the safeguards. And yesterday, when they were asked, they were giving superficial, high level technical legal responses mm -hmm. to say it's a legal offense. We know that. Yeah. But the issue is how do we safeguard against it? Because all the things that they're speaking about is what happens after voting. We, and I mean, I mean, my mother was a nurse, and one of the things she used to say was mm -hmm. prevention is better than cure. So, okay, you had the morning meeting. The IEC has yeah. decided then that they're going to do the sample, uh, the sample audit process. When can we expect the outcome? We, we don't we know, don't but the IEC should be having a press briefing at 2. Um, they were supposed to have one at 12, I, I think, then and because, because of that, now the emerging realities. Because the IEC in that meeting has considered that um, these are grave um, realities, they are grave challenges, and let's actually zoom into them. So the fact that... I mean, I would have expected yeah. that if I make an allegation, the IC gets into a PLC meeting and could immediately on the spot I give, say, da 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 da. You da, can explain. Like, you can explain. Yeah. Like, okay, guys, whoa, hold on. That's the problem. So let's wait for 2 o'clock and see what and happens. see what they say. Yeah. Thank you very much. It's been an that absolute pleasure. Thank, thank you so much. Well, thank if you I for may, just yes. one last yeah. thing I want to do say, though, I want to thank the media mm -hmm. of South Africa. Um, not perfect, 
but in the main having done well to give political parties even as so called small parties a platform to communicate i think let's continue building on those relations share create communication structures so i just want to say the media in the main i mean I've, we've got our grabs as yes. ifp of course and we will raise those moving forward to continue to raise them but i think that you have been a useful and a, a, and, a, and a very positive conduit of the flow of information and those are all the games we must be proud of of our democracy so big ups to all the media houses thank you very much well, i think what we're seeing is the the consolidation of the extremes now in our politics, mm. the far right and consolidated around the freedom front, and then the extreme crazy left around the EFF. So you're going to find the middle, uh, the, it's dulling out. You're yes. going to have the ANC uh, uh, it dropping. The uh, DA, the is DA, the flatlining. Because the conservatives are now moving yeah. to the freedom front plus. So yeah. it's actually a concerning trend in our politics because you've got all these millions around the, the, the fringes of our politics who do not vote, and then you've got these extreme parties and their positions that they hold on. For example, issues of inequality, race, and, and, and the land uh, debate. And I was actually just thinking, I mean, towards this election, we actually had the Freedom Front Plus taking land first, black first, to court. Yeah. So they're fighting <laughs> between each other. Yeah, yeah. And basically the middle is just continuing and losing voters. Yeah, the establishment is actually generally uh, uh, dropping numbers. Yeah. 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 And then, um, I mean, what do we read out of it? Is it the populism, the extremism, the race, the the race politics, would they come back? Would they make a comeback in South Africa? Look, I mean, it, what he tells us is that the sense of a, a rainbow nation uh, has, has really a, a gone, and the politics around the center has become very normalized. Mm -hmm. uh, the ANC has uh, become a normal uh, political party that talks in the, the language yeah. of the former liberation uh, movement, and the DA is really struggling to re-engineer itself uh, around uh, the center. But we should be concerned, though, about uh, the potential uh, rise in, in extremism and populism uh, in, in South right Africa and, and both the right and the left and the millions who are not voting. People who are really disenfranchised, and people who are disillusioned. And I would like us to actually be able to pick up on uh, the voter apathy that we have seen, but we are going to be joined by the ANC's Dakota Lofreta in a moment or two and um, that we can hopefully uh, get some insight and then we'll bring back Sam because there has been concern about, concerns about voter turnout. Uh, some people have said that it might be as low as 60% uh, to be or to be just around 60%, which is quite worrying because we are a country that started with very high percentages and it talks to, that talk to a very engaged nation. And the questions that people are asking, is it that political parties are failing to answer the questions for uh, voters or it's just simply South Africans are not valuing? Uh, voting anymore. But we'll continue with that conversation a little bit later. As I said, we are now joined by the ANC spokesperson, Dakota Nukwete. Thank you very much and uh, welcome to Spiti Piti on EWN. No, oh, thank you very much. Let's take this opportunity to thank you and to all the viewers and listeners at home. Look, when you look at the numbers, we are still below 50% in terms of uh, counting done, but you are still in the lead. But all of these experts that are doing projections have said it's going to be another decline for the ANC. Surely you must be worried about that. Uh, no, indeed we are concerned about that particular development. But you know, it's a democracy in action, democracy maturing. You would see many of South Africans are no longer voting like we did in 94 through emotions. They want real delivery and they want real services. And I think as the incumbent, there were a lot of uh, self-inflicted pains which took us to that particular situation. And I think the sooner many of us who are deployees smell the coffee, the better for the NC. Why do you smell the coffee then, Dakota? And let me, let me explain why I'm asking this. People thought 2016, Losing Twani, losing Johannesburg, losing Nelson Mandela Bay, that has to be painful enough to see the ANC actually change. But you look at between 2016 and where we are now, the scandals, corruption scandals have continued. Lack of delivery in places, that has continued. When do you smell the coffee? Look, we have to put the shoulder to the wheel. And I think. Uh, it's through action because our people have serious suspicions that we just pay a lip service there's no action there's no prosecution against those who are in conflict with the law and and that has somehow created a reputational crisis for us as the governing party and i think the sooner we act the better for us 
a councillor who sells stands in Hamujaji will have to act against them. A municipal manager who fake books and concoct books, uh, an HOD or any other government official who does wrong things. A secretary including, general accused of uh, demanding uh, percentages from those that get tenders from the province that he used to govern. Look, those are allegations so far. We don't have facts, but authorities will have to investigate to get to the bottom because. I mean, we cannot leave any situation unattended if we are to be serious with what we are saying, including what we are directed by the National Conference, that we should act against state capture and act against corruption. And one of the things that has become very clear is that we need to renew the African National Congress. Renewal means doing things the unusual way, and part of it is to even uh, put your members through uh, the painful situation of commissions of inquiry, some of them will have to be investigated, prosecuted, and if found guilty, be, be charged and get the appropriate sanctions. I we guess need we'll see. We'll see if, if it actually happens, if the ANC smells the coffee and does all of that. But let's talk about the issue. We, at hand. we have already started. Yeah. I mean, uh, with all commissions' recommendations which have been there, be it the, the New Gen Commission, be it the Mukhoro Commissions, all recommendations of those commissions were implemented in total. It's up to the Hawks and the NDPP to ensure that whatever that was mentioned in some of those commissions, it gets to be investigated and those who are alleged to have committed some certain elements of criminality or corruption needs to be brought to book so that we close this chapter once and for all because we cannot encourage corruption. It's an economic sabotage. It's not good for the poor. But we need also need to move a, a step further to say even a corrupter, corrupt relations needs to be investigated. The corrupt in this regard is business. Oh, it's old money. We need to get to the private <laughs> but sector. Also. Power is but that's a topic that we can continue on another day. The issue today around uh, the allegations of voter fraud, uh, where does the ANC stand on it? Look, we're one of the parties through the party liaison committee yeah. that has raised our concern in this particular regard. But we said to ourselves as the ANC that we are a player also in the whole elections. The referee is the IEC and the fourth official who is the mesh commissioner is the party liaison committee. So as a player also we have raised our concerns because we can't be a so player. You, are, you, are you saying that as the ANC you also noticed the irregularities or is it what you've just seen uh, being reported by the media and what has been happening on social media? Yeah, it has been the allegations as they are. We would want the IEC as the authority that administers and runs elections to go and make an investigation get to the bottom of the problem and that process when it's done it must be transparent so that all parties can see for themselves whether there's truth or whether there's fiction out of what has been alleged so that we get to the bottom because elections it's a make or break in any democracy you can go through history of mankind all the civil wars you see all the instability you see normally they are from elections so it's not a child's play it's something that we need to get to the bottom of it because we cannot risk the stability of our country. We cannot end up with elections which are going to be dragged in courts for months and years. And, and what was the mood in that meeting? I mean, um, is it a majority view of the uh, party liaising committee that uh, the sample needs to be done and done urgently? Yes, it's a majority view of, uh, of parties in the party liaising committee. And, and we are clear because even whoever wins must win with a necessary integrity and reputation. Unlike being a story that you rigged elections or the IEC favored you, it's not good yeah. for our democracy, it's not good for our, for our country. We are from an experience where the public lost confidence in <coughs> state institutions. We can't afford it with the IEC, we can't afford it with the judiciary. These are the last ten men standing yeah. in terms of our integrity of our country and as a nation. So we cannot encourage them to go to that particular level where we put the have question marks. We are restoring the executive, we are restoring the rest, the system. The we, commission now the electoral on. commission can't be a new player but of course, in this, this story. For the ANC, this is not unfamiliar. We were here in 2017 at the NASRAQ elective conference when you had your own internal processes about voting, but that's a story for another day. Thank you very much. <laughs> but please, can we help the ANC? The ANC has acknowledged yeah. all its problems. The ANC is on a process of self-correction. The ANC is in a process to ensure that we restore the public confidence on the state and state institution. 
including their movement, their National Liberator, the African National Congress. Look, days of impunity are over. The honeymoon for mediocre, the honeymoon for corrupt people, it's over. We can no longer afford. It's too much. We are a national liberation movement and a revolutionary movement. We cannot out house within our structures corrupt elements. They must go. Very strong words there against uh, corruption within the party by party decrees in government by the ANC spokesperson, Dakota Lekwete. Unfortunately, we've ran out of time and we're going to have to leave it here on Spitsy Pitsy on EWN. But of course, we are with you. We are here throughout until Saturday when the final results are announced on Saturday evening. But of course, the results are continuing. And as and when there is breaking news, you must just stay tuned on www.ewn.co.za.